Ladies and gentlemen, tennis aficionados from around the globe, we are gathered here today to witness a clash of titans that transcends the boundaries of the court. In one corner, hailing from the majestic land of Poland, she's the powerhouse with a forehand that can shake the very foundations of the earth. Unstoppable, unyielding, undefeated, the reigning, defending, and undisputed number one female tennis player in the world, the Polish sensation, Iga Świątek. And in the other corner, it's going to be me representing the English language. Let's get ready to rumble! We've done Robert Lewandowski, we've done Edyta Górniak, and we've done even Andrzej Duda. But now, the most requested, it's time to do Iga Świątek. We're going to watch one of her most recent interviews from the Cincinnati 2023, and we're going to review her English. I thought it was only fair to take a recent interview because her English is constantly improving, right? So. Before we start the video, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to me, because the chances are 70% of you are not subscribed. So like the video, subscribe, comment who I should review next. If you stay till the end of the video, I'm going to share a very common mistake that Polish people make and one that Iga Świątek made in this interview. You have to stick around to see it. Do you, do you really want to start this stuff here? <laughs> um, no, like in Rome, I already told you guys that the scheduling sometimes is crazy. Back then, on, during the clay season in Rome and Madrid, I played four matches like close to midnight or after midnight I finished them. It wasn't that obvious as Elena's situation, you know, last week, but um, you know, the fact that we kind of have to, we, I, I understand the business side that we have to adjust to broadcasters and everything, but I also asked WTA for some data, actually, if people are watching um, these matches that are starting past 10 p.m., you know, uh, and I didn't get anything, so um, it would be easier to actually understand and know that it actually make, makes sense for us to play that late. But from what I hear from, like, just the people kind of around me, they're always, like, watching this first match of my session, and I don't know if they are actually staying to watch the second one, you know. And uh, for sure, weather is something that we can't really predict, but um, but maybe we should kind of focus more on what is healthy for players because um, we have to compete every day. Right off the bat, my first impression, it's, it's just a pleasure to listen to, you know. I didn't say anything for like a minute straight because she's doing everything, you know. I don't have to say anything. You you can see how good her English is. It's fantastic. And I guess in the world of tennis, she's constantly traveling. She's constantly speaking English. It's part of the job. So Iga Świątek, woo, I'm a fan. She's really representing well, not only for her country, but herself as a player. It's great. Every week, the tour is like so intense and with travel and um, not actually having like even two days of calm and not, you know, working <laughs> that um, that it would be nice in the future to focus more on the players, especially next year when there are going to be more and more mandatory tournaments and more longer tournaments. So um, I understand the business side, but still I didn't get any like specific information if it actually makes sense. But for sure, it's not healthy to play at that tower. And um, it, it's something we should totally work on because... So she's, I, I believe she's, she's standing up for the players. To stand up for something means to speak about something which is uh, causing problems for a group and to start talking about it. So she's speaking up for players because clearly they're playing these tennis matches really late, like she's finishing after midnight, which is pool knots, or even later than that. So that's clearly a problem in the sport, and she's speaking up about it. 
We're going to have more and more players that are like burned out and um, having, you know, burned also nice. kind of, I mean, physical for sure problems because even in Rome, I, I got injured. I don't know for sure, like the whole intensity ad added up to that. Uh, but playing at these hours is not healthy for sure, physically, mentally. And yeah. Do you guys watch these matches? I mean, you are, yeah, you have to. That's a stupid question. <laughs> Do you guys watch these matches? I think the sign of a, a good English speaker, especially for Polish people, is the ability to ask a question with some correct grammar. Uh, that's very important to use these words like do. Uh, most people would say, you guys watch these matches without the do. So she included, do you guys watch these matches? Um, all incorrect grammar, so questions. Well done. She can ask questions. But um, but do you like watching these matches? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that answers it. That answers it. What a great simple sentence. Yeah, just, I'm just to clarify. You, are you in favor maybe of eliminating the second night match? See, like we in English, we love to use it. That answers it. No to to odpowiada na moje pytanie. But we don't have to say moje pytanie again. We just call we just call it it. That answers it. So she's using all the right vocabulary in all the right places, but also sticking to the basics, you know, just using simple, easy language. That's what it's about. Are you looking to maybe have an earlier start of a night session? How do you envision the schedule? Well, for example, on... Um... On Ron Garros this year, they made the rule that um, the last match is gonna s start at eight. Last See, year it was she, nine. She she's using lots of gonna and lots of uh, I heard as well kinda or something like that. Uh, so these are these really informal contractions. Gonna is a screwed for going to, so it's going to start at eight. But she says it's gonna start at eight. Um, sort of screwed sorta. So she's using these informal, very informal contractions, but they're also a hallmark of a native speaker, of a natural English speaker. I saw one guy on TikTok say, Przestańcie mówić gonna, przestańcie mówić gonna. It's a kropne. That's great. It's actually really good, really useful. It makes things easier. So she's using it. She's sticking to that simple language. It's good. It's good. Nine, they switched it to, or like a couple of years ago, it was nine. Then they are pushing it earlier. And um, yeah, for sure. Like, it would for sure make more sense. And, you know, Rome was pretty frustrating because. Um, it's a good phrase, for sure. Like, na pewno. Because obviously top half plays different day than bottom half and Arena played first. We both played Madrid final, so we had the same situation, you know. Arena played the first day and she honestly said that she was exhausted and she couldn't recover after Madrid and she lost. I requested to play second day, but because of my request, I always was scheduled um, second, second match of a night session. And it was, you know, planned like that for months before, but it's pretty hard to like handle it uh, when you're actually when you actually have to play in the middle of the night. Modifikuje czasowniki. She's saying it's not. You know, yeah, it's hard, but she said it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard. It's like it's quite hard. It's not like tro w miarę trudno. It's like w miarę trudno. For a couple of weeks, and it's not like we're finishing and we're going to sleep after two hours. For me, mostly, it's like I'm happy if I go to sleep after four hours after I finish. I have like almost one hour of treatment, obviously media, we have to stretch after the match, food and getting the adrenaline down, it's not easy as well. So, um, yeah. So See, używa have to, zamiast must, we have to stretch after the match. Yeah, we must stretch after the match. We have to stretch after the match. I wish it could change, that's all. I wish it could change. Honestly, I've got nothing bad to say, only great things. Obviously, she's Polish, so the accent's not going to be like fantastic there. It's, it's not really fully American because when she was talking about połowy, she said the first half, she was like half, but an American would say half, 
half. So she's not really fully American, but she doesn't really sound British either. So she's got kind of got this hybrid neutral accent, which is probably perfect for the tennis world where you've got like French and Italians and all multicultural world. And she probably picks it up from them. But what can I say? Iga's great. I'm going to give her an A for her English. She's doing great and she's only going to keep getting better. 100% she's going to keep getting better. Um, and now for the one mistake that Iga made, I promised I would tell you. And this is a mistake that all Polish people make because it actually comes from the Polish language. So 30 seconds in, she said, or after midnight I finished them. It wasn't that obvious as Elena's situation, you know. It wasn't that obvious as Elena's situation. Czyli chciała powiedzieć, to nie było takie oczywiste jak sytuacja Eleny. It wasn't that obvious as Elena's situation. Skąd się bierze ten błąd? Wejdźmy w polski na chwilę. Chcemy powiedzieć, to nie było takie oczywiste. Po prostu, koniec zdania. To nie było takie oczywiste. Ok? Teraz jak chcemy porównać do czegoś, nie było takie oczywiste jak coś, to dalej używamy tą samą konstrukcję. Takie oczywiste. Czyli to nie było takie oczywiste jak sytuacja Eleny. Czyli to takie oczywiste, ta sama konstrukcja. W języku angielskim ta część się zmienia. So, jak chcemy tylko powiedzieć, nie było to takie oczywiste, mówimy It wasn't that obvious. Koniec, kropka. Tak jak Iga powiedziała. It wasn't that obvious. Ale jak już chcemy porównać to do czegoś innego, tak jak tutaj próbuję robić, as Elena's situation, to musimy zmienić ten that na początku. Ok? Czyli she should have said It wasn't as obvious as Elena's situation. Czyli po dwóch stronach czasownika mamy dwa razy as. It wasn't as obvious as Elena's situation. It wasn't as obvious as Elena's situation. Nie chcemy używać tej starej konstrukcji na to wolno stojący phrase. It wasn't that obvious. Chcemy zmienić ten that na as, jak when we compare. A w polskim języku tak nie robimy. Zostaje po prostu takie oczywiste. So that is a mistake that Iga made here, obviously. I'm not gonna kill her for it. It can happen to anyone. She's learning. But don't let it happen to you. Use her mistakes as learning for you. This is a mistake that all Polish people make. So think about it and correct it in your own brain so you don't make that. As always, if you enjoyed this video, I want you to leave a like. I want you to comment who are we going to review next? Whose English should I check out next? And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.